Hello everyone, Russ of Aquarimax here and today we'll be introducing the three red-sided garter snake juveniles into their new bioactive enclosure. Before we put the snakes in, I'm going to be putting these isopods in. These are Armadillidium klugai Montenegro, also known as the clown isopod. They're a very colorful species and I thought I would put these in here for a couple of different reasons. One is that this species is a uh, kind of a warmth loving species and there's going to be a nice warm hide in here. They also like dry areas as well as moist areas and there are going to be plenty of both in this vivarium and I think they might just breed like crazy and this would be a good species to have in large numbers. It's a species in demand in the hobby and so I want to see if I can get them going in here and as far as colors go this is one of my favorite isopods. All right so I got about 30 to 36 of them. These are mostly juveniles, but some of them are approaching uh, maturity. They mature at about one third of their adult size, as you may already know. So I'm going to put them in here and let them uh, let them go. And then I'll remove those uh, that paper toweling. All right. So let's release the first garter snake into the enclosure. This is Rufus. His full name is Rufus McDanger Noodle. And he is one of my two males. Got these guys back in September. They were born in August. So let's, they've grown quite a lot since then. Let's see what he thinks of his new enclosure. Curious about that cork bark. <laughs> Just kind of sniffing away there. One of the things that I really love about garter snakes is that they seem very inquisitive. They're always interested in looking at things and uh, sniffing them. They're, they love to come out of the enclosure when I'm feeding one snake. The other snakes will come up to my hands, crawl up out of the enclosure onto my hands and see if they can get a, something to eat as well. And they're just very interested in their environment and seem very aware of it. And I'm, of course, not the first one to notice this. Uh, a lot of people have... Uh, mentioned that for years, which is part of the thing that attracted me to keeping garter snakes as pets. All right, and now we're going to put Ruby in. This is my female. She's a little larger than Rufus. And that is natural since the uh, females tend to get quite a bit larger than the males. So she's already gotten, she's already showing that difference, even though she's not that old. She is probably from the same litter as uh, Rufus. There were two litters that were being sold at the same time, but I think they're from the same litter. Oh, she's not losing any time in exploring the crevices down there. I've been uh, testing the temperature over the past few days since I set this up. It's been today's Saturday when I'm filming and it was Wednesday when I set up the enclosure. I've been using my temp gun to check the temperatures to make sure that there's a good range of temperatures in here. The cool spots and the cool hides are right around 71, 72 degrees. And then um, this patch right here is in the mid 80s, mid 80s. It goes up to in, into the 90s right up here. They're probably not gonna spend a whole lot of time up there. Uh, but uh, there's, there's a lot of good temperature ranges, plenty of cool hides, plenty of warm hides, plenty of places to hang out where it's nice and dry, but there are some moist areas as well. And this is Houdini. You may have noticed that my other two snakes, Rufus and Ruby have red in their name. Rufus, one, uh, a word meaning red, and ruby, of course, a type of red stone. Um, I was going to name this snake with a red name as well, but it turns out that uh, he escaped for a week, and we recovered him unharmed, and so I decided to name him Houdini. Before I put him in, I'd like to take a moment to thank our Patreon backers. We really appreciate your support. We appreciate what you've done for the channel. You helped to make this Bavarian build possible and you will continue to help make other things possible. We're, we're really excited to have uh, more Patreon backers this month. And uh, if you would like to become a Patreon backer, I will put a link at the end of this video and in the description to the video. So thanks again to all of our backers. We really appreciate it. Now let's put Houdini in. They're just all sniffing away at that cork bark, aren't they? 
they have a piece of cork bark in their enclosure, so this is not a new thing, but of course that cork bark is going to smell different than this cork bark coming from a different source and the fact that this is in a different place. But I, I really, really get a kick out of watching them being so inquisitive. Looks like Rufus is over here exploring the lemon button fern. Oh, they're already using the branches. I put some branches in there earlier today hoping that they would use them and he's actually using that one to climb on, so that's a good sign. Garter snakes are not the most arboreal of snakes, but uh, if he's going to climb a little bit, I'm happy, happy that they'll use the branches to climb a bit. It's nice to see how there's colors stand out on this naturalistic uh, leaf litter. It's, it's kind of fun to see. Um, that is another reason why I like uh, garter snakes. They're likely to be out and about where you can see them a lot, being diurnal snakes and very active snakes. So that was another reason why I chose to get some garters in here. And Rufus is even climbing up the back wall. So. I'm glad to see that the space is going to be well utilized. If you're interested in learning more about this subspecies of garter snake, this is Thamnophis sertalis parietalis, then you can check out some links that I have in the description under the video. Thanks for watching today. I post videos every Wednesday and Friday, all on aquarium and vivarium pets. Please feel free to share, rate, comment, and if you haven't already, subscribe. And then, Click the bell icon so you don't miss my next video.